Good morning, welcome to day seven. You know what that means? I'm gonna change this tarp into a different configuration. The next tarp, um, I just need three pegs, a piece of rope and a tree. I think that's pretty much done Dave, yeah? Do you want to do the honours? I'll do the gas. We'll do the gas, I should do a lot with gas. Oh, Jesus Christ, the gas. Yeah, take that out, I'll just be melted in. There's plenty of water there, there's enough to wash your face with as well. <laughs> Cheers mate. Jesus Christ, careful. What is that? Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's brilliant this, you know. Is it wood you have to take all your litter home with you? <laughs> but now I'm home, so I don't have to take it anywhere. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> Right, so this plow tarp configuration is a uh, real easy, nice and spacious. Um, usually you'd use one tree, three pegs and a bit of rope. That's all I've ever used. However, we're in a domestic environment. So what I've actually used is a drain pipe, a brush and about 10 pegs. Oh, plus a piece of rope. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been really very slow this morning really um, the uh, my mate Dave who I live with he came out for breakfast this morning so we had breakfast together that was that was nice he's uh, bought himself a primer stove he's got a little bit of camping gear um, to do with the cooking side because we used to do a lot of walks um, together 
So he's got he's got like a stove cook set and all that kind of thing. He doesn't have a sleeping bag, a sleeping mat or a tent or anything like that. So he's just ordered himself a new primer stove. Can't remember which one he said. No, it's I can't remember which stove he said he was getting, but uh, it's a decent one. Um, and I've advised him to get the Primus gas. They recommend that he use their gas with their stoves. And and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is his kit. This is one of his stoves. And um, he has got another stove, which is the old fold-out army style with the hexamine blocks. This is his kettle. We did think it whistled, but I don't think it does this particular one. So I just thought I'd show you my cutlery set. Um, in here, I've got uh, my spatula, a couple of toothpicks, and I keep my. This is a spoon carving knife or a cookser, which is a wooden cup kind of knife. You can you can make a lot of wooden kind of um, plates, spoons, that kind of thing with something like that. Next of all, I have the pot grabber. Pair of scissors, standard tin opener, obviously with a bottle opener on it. Um, I tend to only take this out with me when I've got tins to open. Then I've got the Yugoslavian mess uh, set. These are the knife, fork and spoon out of it. So you've got a tin opener, tin opener on that side, bottle opener on that side. And the kit does fit together quite nicely. Stainless steel, so it's a little bit heavy. Next of all, I've got a Sunday, kind of a Sunday spoon. Um, I use this usually for MREs because the packets can be quite deep to get the uh, contents out. So yeah, I mean, it's not a necessity. You could open, you could rip your MRE bag open and eat out of it that way. And the last thing that I've got in here is a pair of tongs, which I want to replace these. I don't like this, this springiness. You can get them that are one piece, one piece of metal. So uh, I will invest in some of them in the future. The bag itself is just a canvas tool bag that I bought off Amazon, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it could do with a wash, but it all just rolls up neatly. Strap grows around and it just hooks on there like that. So in this part, I've got some um, Taraxicum officinala, which everybody knows as dandelion. Uh, I've got some Urtica diotica, which is stinging nettle, and I've also got some Gallium aparin, which is uh, some people know it as goose grass or sticky willy or cleavers. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, chop a little bit of onion in there, just finely chop it, and then I'm going to fry all this off just for a couple of minutes.
few dandelion leaves on the side <clears throat> well for, for starters soaking the dandelions in water does help get rid of a lot of that bitterness like I say, I kept rinsing them, soaking them, rinsing them every couple of hours. Certainly made it better. Let's try some of this scrambled egg. Mm. Surprisingly good. So the hen eggs have come from film work. Thelma and Louise that live next door. They're free range hens. I went round there the other day just to help myself to them. Right, so it's uh, half past the witching hour. Time for me to get my sleeping bag and blow my socks off. Um, I'm going to leave you with this next little video. I've compressed an hour into 10 minutes down in the bushcraft shed, um, again on the radio, more people on it this time. Uh, it's quite comical. Some, some parts of it are quite comical, so it is worth a listen. Um, I explain a bit more on, on the beginning of that video. If you do your shopping at Morrison's, there's some important information on there, so it's it's worth uh, worth listening to um, and I'll see you all uh, tomorrow thank you for watching so as a follow-on to uh, day six's video uh, where I showed you how to make a, a dipole antenna which is for a repeater that's on the hillside near me um, that repeater every morning has something called a network on it and um, it's run by a guy called Bill and when he's not available someone else takes over and we'll get a lot more contacts on there from, from all around the UK um, hopefully I'll get a chance to talk to Bill uh, he's up in Cumbria so if I can get to Cumbria from North Wales coast we're doing pretty well 
Um, right, so I'll just wait for it to, to fire up so every, for, for everybody to get busy. It usually starts around 10 o'clock. So I'll bring you back when, uh, when the network opens up. Here we go, here's Bill. Two whiskey zero, four strong whiskey, Bill, how are you? CJJ, got you there. Uh, Charlie Mike, Brian, are you there? Roger, Charlie Mike, got you there. Hello, Is somebody else? Two whiskey zero, four strong whiskey, Andy. Thank you, why I've got that, sorry, who was it? Who was that one? Two whiskey zero, four strong whiskey. So that's the guy I was just talking to, Luke. Uh, I thought it was you. I wasn't too sure, Luke. I wasn't too sure. You remind so me of So Bill else is in Cumbria, so obviously uh, you can hear me. Else, please? No, just bear with me, fellas. I'll have a quick one with Andy there, because uh, I think it's been a little while since I've heard from that. Two whiskey, Foxtrot, Romeo whiskey. Uh, how are you? Well, I think I've got the right one. Andy, yeah? That is correct, Bill, yes. What are you doing, mate? How are you getting by with all this uh, palaver that's going on? Well, I'm camping out in the back garden, mate. I've been doing since uh, since it all started, and I'm going to release myself from the back garden when it's all over. You know me, Bill. I like to get out and about camping, but I can't do it at the moment. Yesterday, I made a homebrew aerial. Check out Sausage and Scouse Facebook uh, Facebook page. The videos on there, mate. <laughs> a single bed and a bedside cabinet. You couldn't get anything else in here, to be frightfully honest. But uh, anyway, good morning to you. Nice to have you on. Are you going to stay with us, Andy, mate? Or uh, are you just uh, sunbathing in your... I can imagine you sat out there in your onesie. No, mate, no. I'm in the shed. Yeah, I'm staying with you today, buddy. I'll stay with you today till uh, till we all finish. No, mate, no problems at all. Right, let's carry on. CJJ, uh, portable. Right, so I've just uh, just turned, turned the radio down a little bit. So later on, Bill will do a readout of who's actually on channel, all our call signs. So I'll bleep them out, apart from me, I'm not bothered about me, but I'll bleep everybody else out just to cover their identity. Um, you can also listen to this repeater if you've got access to the internet. There's a, a program called Web SDR, Hat Green Web SDR. If you go on there at 10 o'clock when this network starts, you can listen to the repeater and all those lot talking. Um, if you're listening at it's around about 10 o'clock um, every morning so I'll put a link in the description to that to, to that website where you can uh, you can check it out and I'll leave when I put the link in the description I'll put in brackets the actual frequency that you need to be tuning into right so uh, usually what happens is Bill waffles on for a bit and then he'll bring more contacts in so I'll bring you back in a minute Oh, I it's Easter, isn't it? Knee and have it there, backside slapped. I'm volunteering, by the way, but uh, there we are. So, uh, I haven't had lamb for a long, long time, I must be honest. But uh, never mind, right, so if anybody's listening to, listening to me out there, good morning to all. <laughs> Beautiful day. 15.7 degrees here at the moment. Regarding that lamb, I wasn't fed any information to say that, by the way. I'm, I'm acting all innocent now. I've got my little halo flying above my head. So, uh, don't, think, uh, bad, don't think bad of your other halves. Oh, too oily. Lamb, greasy, was lovely. Lovely. You can say that about mackerel and uh, fish like that. I wouldn't have thought that again. Anyway, never mind. East of the road. East of the road. Right. Got your Robert. Stand by. SW in the group. G0. Yeah, wine. Sunny. Hi, Luke. Uh, been out with the dog. You, Phil, CJJ, Brian, X-Ray, Charlie, Mike. 
So he's got Skype as well, Bill has. So there's a few people on Skype that uh, tune in as well. Yeah, I certainly am, Bill. I certainly am. Uh, not much to report, really. Uh, I'm just going to sort this tarp out today and turn it around into a different configuration for tonight's camp. Um, use a different cooker. Maybe cook some dandelions up. Uh, and that'll be about it. Bill's just, just finishing off the now. He wants a cup of tea. But uh, apart from that, not much. Uh, quite a few of the windmill things, the wind generators on the hill are, are turning. Not all of them, mind you. So, uh, what it'd be like out in the Ogden in Morecambe Bay, where there's just about 6,000 of the darn things, I don't know. But I'm not going to hang out of the window to have a look. Right, thanks to Penny down there in Kent. Thanks to Rob down in Ormscote. Chris and Paula down there in uh, Rob, uh, Robford. Robford, hold it somewhere, do you? Tamworth. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll not forget Rob and uh, Helen, of course, and the family and the lads, and everybody else that might be listening, uh, Noni and uh, Peter, anybody else that might be listening to us, thank you for your time, anybody on frequency, anybody's got a birthday today, good morning to you all, uh, well, getting wet, getting married and getting divorced, of course, all things have gone by the board, uh, thanks Rob, catch you later, mate, all the best, and uh, cheers, cheers from me, and uh, all the best for now. And, uh, right, let's carry on, cup of tea time, till tomorrow, all those that can join me, I appreciate your time. And uh, thanks to the latest GW, Diana Shirley, Oscar Golf Tango down there in real, Dave, to Charles Ed and uh, Sylvia down in Press Batting, John in Wick and Dave Albucker in Frackleton, Bob of course, our Bob in Rainhill, Mark in St. Helens, Paul H. Abigail, and Jeffrey Stallwalt, Jeff in Sefton Park, Wibbly Wobbly John, m 6 over there in Leeds, Simon in Leyland, Sharon and B B Malcolm in Blackpool, Robin Ormskirk, Pam and Bob in the Bolton area, Tommy in the old uh, uh, Liverpool, Arthur in Ormskirk, uh, John at the new ferry, Barry in Real, Ted and Mrs. Ted Liverpool, Peter GHCVF in the Upton area, for the Peter, good morning, Graham to his area, Julian Delta and Cathy's other half in Leyland, Stephen G. Sierra Tango Echo in the town of Shirley near Croydon, South East London, if you still listen to our SDR, I've absolutely no idea. David and Chris, David and Christine out there in the Bolton areas, as I said beforehand, and Dougie to his <laughs> Q 
you in the West Orton area. Anybody else, God bless. Look after yourself. Take care and appreciate your time. Now it's time for a cup of tea. Cheers, Bob. Six over to you. We'll cut you again a bit later on. Bye for now. Thanks for the net, and after three weeks, I've got a letter from Boris. Oh, I got mine uh, yesterday, I think it was, Bob. Yeah, yeah, I've got to frame it. Was there a £20 note in yours? <laughs> oh, unfortunately, there you go. <laughs> what do you expect? Wasn't one in mine either. But never mind. Uh, all the best, mate. Catch a bit later on. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.